River Caraba here with another handy hubby, the, our new segment uh, as part of my channel where I do kind of crafty or hands-on DIY stuff around our house completely at the bidding of my wife. Today, the first thing that we're doing is we are going to be building a clothing rack for Allison. So in our vlogging channel or our vlogging playlist as part of this channel, you will see that Allison and I are watching a lot of like remaking homes and crafty stuff in our, t in our on Netflix and so it kind of inspired us. If you didn't see any of our vlogs or you don't subscribe to our vlogs, go ahead and click the exclamation point right up here in the corner. I will send you over to our vlog, or excuse me, our vlog playlist and also can check out Allison's blog in the description below. So Allison has a blog that she talks about um, sustainable fashion and ethical sourcing of materials for um, just fashion stuff. I'll let you learn from her about what it actually is. But um, I was charged with building a clothing rack so she can do some of her photo shoots and stuff like that. And so rather than spend like hundreds of dollars on a really nice uh, clothing rack, I decided that I could do this by myself and make arguably a better quality piece of equipment. So first, here are some photos that you can see right now uh, that were kind of our inspiration. So we we're looking at kind of like the raw pipe and the wood uh, look that we're gonna go for that has the flanges go right into a wood platform so she can put some shoes on there if she wants and then also the rollers at the bottom. So we just got back from Home Depot. We spent around about between like $50 and $100 to um, make this thing possible. So there are some extra bells and whistles that we want that increase the price, but you also can make this for, like I said, about $50 if you wanted to. So the things that you're gonna need are, obviously you're gonna need your casters, you're gonna need some, some lag bolts, and you're gonna need um, some elbows, some stuff like that. I will put a list of everything that you need right now on the screen. So also, just in case you're wondering in terms of what tools you're gonna need to make this thing possible, here are all the tools that I needed to produce this piece of furniture. All right, let's get to work. So one of the first things I did is lay down a tarp to not get any of the stain anywhere because what we wanna do first is go ahead and stain our board. The first thing that why we wanna do that is because the board and the stain can dry while we're working on some of the pipes. The stain that Allison decided to go with is a sun bleached, so we think that's gonna look really good with the silver pipes. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this and then evenly apply our stain across the entire top and side portions of the board. Key here are long, even strokes. So now that I'm waiting for my stain to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on some of my pipes. So some of the pipe work that I have to do is fit the crossbar to the elbows and the elbows to the verticals and then the verticals to the flanges. Since we don't have any water running through these pipes, we don't even have to have them the ends sealed. So all these pipes have been threaded already from the manufacturer. So all you have to make sure you do and make sure you pay attention to the size of the elbows and the flanges. So in this case, this is a half inch pipe, so make sure you get half inch elbows and also half inch flanges. Just get it on there nice and snug. And now the other end. Now, when putting this other end on, the second end, it's very, very important to make sure that both of the elbows are facing in the same direction. So there we go, I got both of my elbows on my crossbar, and this is the piece that's gonna be sitting horizontally, okay? So perpendicular to the floor, this is where the actual hangers are gonna sit on and have all my clothing on. So now that I have my horizontal piece and my two vertical pieces, all I really need to do is then attach my horizontal to my vertical. All right, there we go. So now you can start to see this thing is coming together. 
So we've got our two vertical pieces hooked to our horizontal. So now we need to hook on the flanges. So all we have to do is put the flange on, screw like so. We're going to want to make sure that these get on here really tight and we consistently have them to the same depth on either side. Otherwise, we won't be even. So now, with our flanges on either side, we can actually stand up. The stain itself actually takes quite a bit of time to dry, but I wanted to get the top single coat on first. I'm going to do two coats and let that dry, and then I do the edges. I'm not going to be staining the bottom portion because there's really no point for me, but once I get the top stained, now I'm going to do the sides and then do the top again. Now it's pretty natural when you do the sides like this that you get a little on the top, which is why I'm gonna immediately go over it again since it's had some time to dry. So for us, we want a little bit of extra stain just to have a little bit of the wood grain coming through. So it's mostly this like bleached, almost like sandalwood color. You should wait about 30 minutes before attempting to work with this at all. So give it a chance to dry a little bit because our next step is going to be screwing our caster wheels onto the bottom of this board. So when I first started this project a minute ago, I had mentioned how we did something that we kind of upgraded. One of the things you can do to upgrade a clothing rack like this is by the size of the casters. Now these are pretty large casters. These wheels themselves are probably about three inches across. So. These are a little bit bigger than what you would absolutely need. If you wanted just to have the board on the ground as yourself, you could do that, but then you just have to be very careful to not screw the screws all the way through. So my recommendation is always to put some form of casters. You can get little bitty ones so it still moves around a little bit, but with the bigger casters like this, you have a little bit of clearance and you can kind of move it around. I have links to all of the parts that I'll be using for this project in the description below. So if there's any question about what part that I used for this project, please reference the description below. The other thing that you gotta make sure that you do is make sure that you have secured the right screw sizes that you need. So the screws that I'm particularly using in this is the number 12 screws from Home Depot. They look kind of like this. They're the um, wood, so make sure they have a bigger bite. Be very, very sure that you don't get the metal fabricating screws because that will really screw you up or the self-tapping screws. Don't want those. And then you have to make sure a couple things go on. So what I got here is I have some washers. So the reason why I got washers is because based on the selection that they had at Home Depot, the screws could theoretically pass right through the eyelets of the casters. So you don't want that. So that's why we invested in some washers. They just flip, flip on our screw just like that. And then go right into our caster. And now we have no problems at all. So now once your board's dry, all you need to do is bring it in and turn it back upside down for us to put the casters on. So the board itself is the exact size that I need it to be. So all I need to do is position the casters in the spots where I want them, and we want them a little towards the edge so you can see them be exposed, and then screw them down. I never normally screw things down all the way before getting the caster in position because if you get it screwed down all the way and you screw it up a little bit, there's no opportunity to fix it. All right, now that we have all four casters on, just need to flip it over. Make sure we've got movement. So now all we need to do is bring our newly casted board into our space and put our hanging unit on top. So all we have to do is just kind of set it on here exactly where we want it. What I would recommend is actually going ahead and measuring where exactly middle is and putting the bar exactly where that mark is. Now you may have noticed that I put the mark a little bit on the inside and that's because when we put the flange and attach that to the board, the flange will cover the mark. So that way you don't have to worry about having a mark on top of your newly stained board. 
So the bolts that we're gonna use are actually one inch lag bolts. They look just like this and that way we're not bolting all the way through the bottom but the lag bolts will hold the flange to the board. So all you have to really do is put the flanges exactly where you want them, lining up the middle bars on exactly your lines that you had, and attach them to the board. Like before, I don't always put it down all the way until I get the thing secured to where I like it. All right, so once you put all eight of the bolts into the flanges, you should get a product that looks something like this. All right, now this would not be a handy hubby video if we didn't get any sort of approval. So, I've got my wife, Allison, here. What do you think? I think it's beautiful. Thank you, babe. Is it gonna work? Yeah, it's perfect. All right. Yay. Again, my name is River Caraba. I've got this YouTube channel here. My wife and I daily vlog every single day. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you haven't seen any of our daily vlogs, be sure to check them out. If you want to see more the handy hubby videos that I'm going to be producing, be sure to subscribe, give this video a like, and share it with your friends that want to make their own DIY clothing rack. Thanks a lot, and we will see you next time.